Just a heads up, if you work in fire EMS, you may not like this video because it's contrary to a lot of the mainstream narratives. To be alive. Please God, let them be alive. Hello? My brother gave me some advice when I first started going through my EMT training. And he told me, if you ever rolled up on a fatal MVA or, or on an MVA, he said, don't just run up and look inside the vehicle. Your adrenaline's pumping. It's your first instinct is to get in there and see what's going on and assess the problem, right? First of all, if you work in fire or EMS, you should never, ever be recording yourself as you're walking up to the scene of an incident. Next, when you do show up on scene, you should not be getting out of the truck and running. This is day one of EMT and medic school information. While you're pulling up, you're assessing the scene. Some people call it a windshield assessment or when you get out of the truck and you're walking up to any fire, EMS call, rescue, whatever it is, you're looking around. You're taking in as much information as you can so that when you do get to the patient, you can get right in there and begin to assess them. You will shock yourself so bad, okay? You will put yourself in a shock. Um, and there's a simple thing you can do to prevent that from happening. Okay, or at least minimize it. And that is you just take a moment and you focus in on that scene with your peripheral vision. Okay, you try to take in as much detail with your peripheral vision as possible before you look. And when you look, you slowly turn. Yes, it's going to take a little bit more time. There's precious seconds going on. But trust me, you're going to thank me if you ever have this happen. You will not go into shock when you show up on scene. The reason is, is because if you've already gone through EMT and medic school, you should have done hundreds of hours of ride time and hospital time where you've been exposed to a variety of different injuries and things. Now, if you're brand new or maybe you're a student or maybe you're somebody that doesn't work in fire EMS and this isn't something you see regularly. Yeah, it can be a little unnerving the first time you see it, but you're not going to put yourself into shock. And if you are an EMS provider, the last thing you should do is walk up to a scene, waste time while you're side eyeing it, trying to prepare yourself before you go treat your patient. You need to be assessing as you're coming up so that when you get there, you can immediately begin to treat your patient. So if you ever find yourself in this situation, God forbid, do what I'm telling you to do, you'll thank me later. I can assure you that if you want to work in fire or EMS, you will find yourself in this situation. It's a part of the job. Now I'm sure there's going to be people that jump on me in the comments and tell me I mean or I don't understand. But what I don't understand is this incessant push for people in fire and EMS to almost convince people prior to joining the industry that they're going to be traumatized and they're going to have PTSD and they may end up committing suicide. Most of the people who work in this industry do not suffer from that. And while some people do, there are many resources out there to get you help. And if you do need help after you see something difficult, you should absolutely pursue those resources. And if you are one of those people that drive the stigma that if you look for help, you're weak, you're a terrible person and you should stop. But the other thing that should also stop is this incessant pushing on young firefighters, EMTs, and medics that just because they saw something sad, that just because they did their job, now they're suffering from some sort of traumatic experience or disorder. That's not the case. Stop. The world needs tough people. The world needs people like you to stand up and to do your job and do it well and move on so you can continue to do it in the future.